So the first set of problems that you might encounter with enterprise systems uh, are around technical issues. And technical challenges fall into these, into these, into these categories listed on the, on, on the slide. So the first challenge is one of heterogeneity. Um, for the same reason that uh, enterprise systems are, end up being distributed not by design but by fact or by nature, um, systems end up being disparate or different by nature. So when the, first, when, when the first set of applications were written, they might have been written for mainframes, they might have been written in COBOL. When the next set of enterprise applications were written, they were written in, in C or C++ on Linux. When the next set were written, they were written on uh, using you know, uh, Visual Basic on Windows machines that then moved on to .NET, or they might have been written in Java, which then moved on to J2EE. Uh, so this heterogeneity, exists in the hardware, exists in the operating system, and exists in the implementation languages. Um, the second challenge is one of transaction management. So just to recall what a transaction is, a transaction is a collection of operations that execute as a whole um, without interference from other collections of operations and that execute in, in an atomic manner. So um, these collections of operations that make up a transaction either execute in, firstly execute in isolation so that they, they can't be interfered by or interfere with other, other such transactions. And secondly, they ex execute atomically, which is either the entire collection of operations succeeds or the entire collection fails. Um, now, if you were writing a, a, uh, a application that ran on a single system, on a single piece of hardware, Transaction management is, is straightforward. Uh, typical databases will handle uh, transactions for you. So you can execute multiple lines of code that do multiple database operations, and all those operations will operate as a transaction. However, when the system is distributed, the transaction has to begin at one machine, continue through another machine, go on to a third machine, and complete at a fourth. Um, now, these are all independent machines. Each of these machines could fail independently. And maintaining transactional integrity, which means that all these operations operate without interfering with anything else, uh, and they operate in, in an atomic manner. So when they, they either they all succeed, and remember when, when I say they all succeed, I mean all the different components that are each executing on different machines, they all succeed as a whole or fail as a whole. Um, same issue is there with state management. So... Uh, state is basically the valuable value of the variables in a program. Now, if you think of a distributed program, it's really multiple programs running, each with values of variables. And um, the state across each of these programs must be consistent. And to give you an example of what I mean by the state across programs need to be consistent, think of a browser-based application where you click on a button to say you want to buy the product, and that executes a database some business logic and then some database transaction. Um, when the button is pressed, it shows as depressed on the browser, and it needs to stay depressed until the logic in the in the business layer completes and the database operation completes. It would not be consistent if um, the, the 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 business logic layer completed, the database operations completed, but the button still showed as being pressed. Okay, um, so um, now you have these multiple machines, each with distributed state. Each of them has to be kept consistent. The third related problem is one of partial failures, which is when you have these multiple machines, each of them could fail independently. And even though they could fail independently, it, it might not be sufficient to recover that machine independently because in, in the meantime, all those other machines would be in an inconsistent state. So either um, all the machines have to be brought back up to a consistent state to the state pre previous to an operation or to a state uh, following the operation. So this transaction um, problem exists, um, is, you know, is, is similar to this notion of partial failures. Um, the, the, next, the next issue is one of concurrency. Now, you might think that programs run concurrently on a single box as well. So, you know, when you're using your laptop, that programs are running simultaneously. But actually, unless you're running, running it on a multi-core processor, things are actually happening one at a time. Whereas in an enterprise system, which once again is a distributed system, there is true parallelism. There are applications running on multiple machines executing simultaneously that need to collaborate with each other. Um, and they could be um, causing uh, interference at the, at the Ethernet layer or the networking layer, you know, things like that. The next problem is one of integration compatibility. So 
if there is a hardware or a software component on one machine that needs to talk to a hardware or software component on a second machine, those two components have to be compatible. Um, to give you an example of that, um, if there is a networking component on a Linux box and a networking component on a DEC box, when one box sends a message, say a TCP IP message, it has that message has to be understood by the by the the, the networking component on the other box. Um, you you might think that this is a trivial issue, or it might or not a real issue, but this problem actually existed when um, DEC machines. Um, DEC used to be a company that was very very famous, but then was was purchased by comp, you know pretty much went bankrupt. Um, um, represented numbers, they would store it with the most significant bit to the left, whereas when you know on Linux machines, the the most significant bit of a word or a byte was to the right. So when a message was sent, the 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 the, the number that was sent was not the number that was received. Um, so you had to do things like only send strings. You couldn't set, send integers or floating point numbers and so on across the network. Um, uh, security becomes an issue. So now when you have all these multiple machines, each being geographically distributed, you have multiple points of vulnerability. So if you have two machines talking to a, another, so if you have a Linux box, once again, talking to a deck box, and the Linux box has been correctly patched and is completely secure. However, the deck box has not been properly patched and is not secure. Well, somebody somebody could break into the deck box and then execute operations on the Linux machine um, by by you know spoofing some kind of um, by spoofing an, an an authorized role. And then finally, the issue is one of the, the, the technical issue is one of integrated management, and we touched upon that earlier when we talked about management suites. Uh, here the idea is that all the machines in the enterprise system need to be managed as a whole. So, for example, all the Linux machines need to be upgraded to the new version of Linux at, almost as one transaction. Uh, you, you need to be able to monitor all the machines. Um, if, you need, if one machine goes down and it happens to be an important machine, you need to be able to take out all the dependent machines as well and then bring them back up as a whole, things like that. You might think that with new technologies that these technical challenges have been solved or, or, or you know, become easier to solve. And the answer is that they actually haven't. They have become harder to solve. Um, the reason is that the newer technologies actually um, support heterogeneity and loose coupling. Um, th that is sort of the, the intent behind these technologies. So, for, so to give an example of that, um, you know, you know that from within a program you can call a function. When if you only had C++ to deal with or a programming language, well, that function, the library, the, the, the code of the function was actually linked in with the code of the main program. Um, web services sort of give you the same capability, except that the function that implements the web service can be on a remote machine. Okay, um, and um, the, the 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 calling program and the code on which the remote function resides could be on two, two separate machines. They could be they, they could be on a wide area network. Um, when the when the invocation is made, um, there is no guarantee that the invocation will actually be delivered to the the, the machine that is implementing the function. Um, the the calling program can actually proceed on after making the invocation. Um, so so. The, the point really is that while web services look like a function call, they really are not like a function call. They, are, they have really permitted these two um, components, the, the main program and the, and the function that is called, to be loosely coupled. Okay? Um, so, so all the newer technologies have really gone towards making loose, leak, loose coupling easier. But loose coupling actually makes challenges harder, not easier. Uh, so, so one challenge, which is heterogeneity, that is directly addressed. So you can have a, a web service that's implemented on a mainframe that can be called from a Java program or on a Unix box or from a Windows program on a, on a uh, from a dot net program or a, or a C sharp program on a on a on a Windows box um, identically. Uh, so heterogeneity is directly addressed and is now easier to deal with. However, because of loose coupling, 
partial, partial failures are more common. Concurrency is harder to control because it's just the nature. Every application supports concurrency. Uh, integration is more unreliable, and you really haven't solved anything with respect to security. Okay, so um, just keep this in mind that as the new technologies are emerging, they're making certain things easier, which is essentially dealing with heterogeneity and dealing with distribution. They're making a lot of things harder. Okay. So now let's go on to the next challenge, which is uh, one of, of the, the changing requirements that these enterprise systems have to support. So when um, these enterprise systems were initially conceived of and built, they were conceived of and, and, and built to support simple transactions. Um, you know, man, manage the, the, the accounting of the, of the firm, uh, maybe manage um, the buying of certain products, maybe handle a point of sale system, and, and so on. Um, but once everybody had these basic technology capabilities, um, the, the, the customers started demanding more and more flexible services. Okay? So, for, you know, things like um, you want to be able to buy movie tickets at an ATM. So now the bank has to bank system has to now integrate with the the the, the movie theater system, uh, you know things like that. Um, essentially, what has happened is um, people have moved from a product buying orientation to a services buying orientation. Uh, basically, as they've moved up, what is known as Maslow's hierarchy of need. So when you know when their basic needs, food and shelter, have been met, you start looking for things like services. Uh, sorry, for things like entertainment uh, and vacations and things like that. And those become less products and more services. Okay, so you're, each, each person is looking for a customized experience. And when, when that customized experience is needed, um, what, is, what needs to be provided by the offering company is really a service, not a, not a, not a canned product. Okay. Um, so, so the basic point is these enterprise systems have to go go beyond simply providing simple transactions to be providing these more complex services. Uh, another um, 